But uh, what Paul is saying about the, uh, this, uh, this real genuine threat that's coming from the left today it is absolutely right. It's been, it's been going on for a long time. And I was going to open with a quote from uh, a chap called Charles Reich, who was a, a Marxist communist in the 1970s. And he said, uh, there is a revolution coming. It will not be like the revolutions of the past. It will originate with the individual and with culture, and it will change the political structure only as its final act. It will not require violence to succeed, and it cannot be successfully resisted by violence. This is the revolution of the new generation. Now, Charles Wright said this in 1970, and we today are living pretty much at the end of their cultural revolution, their long march through the institutions. And it's all around us. We think we're going to the dogs and the country is not what it was. Well, it isn't. It is going to the dogs. And it's going not just to the dogs, it's going towards our literal end of Western civilization in, in Britain and also all across Europe and it's now in America as well. And what was, what was once immoral is now moral and what was once moral is now immoral. This is the, the whole inversion of, uh, of, of morality is what drove their revolution. And there's uh, another guy, uh, George Lukash, who was part of the Frankfurt School. I won't bore you with the Frankfurt School because I'm sure you all know about it. But, but Lukash said, quote, uh, I saw the revolutionary destruction of society as the one and only solution. The worldwide overturning of values cannot take place without the annihilation of the old values and the creation of new ones by the revolutionaries. And this again is, is what we're living through today. And uh, Herbert Marcuse, another one of these uh, professors over in, uh, I can't remember which university, was asked who were going to be the revolutionary people that would drive their revolution here rather than the Soviet workers. And he replied it would be the oppressed, the blacks, the homosexuals, the feminist militants, even Che Guevara. This was before Islam reared its head. Islam is absolute manna from heaven for these people because this really seriously drives their revolution. And the whole point of that, I'll just dwell briefly on the Frankfurt School, was the, the idea that, that it was gonna destroy us through, their, through, through making us think or believe in certain ways. And this included the, the destructive criticism of Christianity, capitalism, authority, the family, patriarchy, morality, tradition, sexual restraint, loyalty, patriotism, heredity, ethnocentrism, and conservatism. And critical theory also goes out of its way to repeat the basic problems with what they perceive to be the problems with the West, which is racism, sexism, Islamophobia, colonialism, nationalism, homophobia, fascism, xenophobia, imperialism. Ad, da, 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 da. And they have successfully done it. And their point was to destroy our culture and to destroy our civilization. And they've done it in all sorts of little ways. When Paul earlier talked about the, uh, about the trade unions, destroying industry was incredibly important to the communists because if our economic base disappears, then we either disappear with it or we embrace communism. And you look at a country like Germany today that manufactures cars. Now we used to manufacture cars, but the communist left got involved in the, in the trade unions, people like Derek Hatton, and they managed to destroy completely our manufacturing base in terms of auto engineering. We used to be a world leader at it, but not anymore, that's gone. Jack Jones was the uh, president of the TGWU in the uh, 1970s, he's actually on record as being collaborating with, with, uh, with Moscow. He was actually doing it. He was being debriefed by people from Moscow. And these are the people that have essentially destroyed our manufacturing engineering base in this country. Now if you do that, and you then become a white collar industry country, a, a, a country of paper shufflers, you can't just destroy the, the industry, you then have to destroy education, because if you destroy education, the paper shufflers 
aren't qualified enough to continue all of their little paper shuffling. So they got into the schools and they destroyed our educational system. This, th th this was incredibly important and we are now one of the most dumbed down countries in the world when it comes to our educational system and we used to be at the very top of it. So destroy industry, destroy education, two very important things. Also destroy the family. Feminism was never about a war against men. Feminism was a war against the family. Because, because the family is, is that one unit that stands between the state and freedom. The state doesn't want families out there. They want little dismembered, fractured members of society that they control. You know, when Lenin was once asked what the, uh, what the, the real driving force of communism was, and then he said one word, he said, it is about control. And when the state gets to control you, they don't want a family. That's just out of their window. Germaine Greer was a, obviously a feminist, but she was also a communist. And a lot of people don't understand that. She said, back in, the, in her uh, female eunuch book, in the introduction, she said, women's liberation, if it abolishes the patriarchal family, will abolish a necessary structure of the authoritarian state. And once that withers away, Marxism and communism will have come true. So let's get on with it. Feminism and communism are of the same political ideology. They are there to, to destroy Western civilization via the family. If you can destroy those things, there are more things you still need to get into. Destroy religion. Not all religion, obviously. Protect some religions, but destroy Christianity. All great civilizations are built around religions, and ours was no exception. We would never have become what we are today without our Christian heritage. So it was incredibly important, and also the morality that comes with that. You know, Moses and the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. These were important. So getting rid of of Christianity particularly is another thing that stands between again the state and control of the people if you have an, an oppressive totalitarian state you cannot have a religion that goes with it because their po their politics is what they want your new religion to be so eradicate religion if you eradicate religion the morality of that religion still lives on afterwards. So you then need to eradicate or destroy morality. Moral relativism. There is no such thing as right or wrong or good or bad. This is all about destroying our moral standpoints. Without morality, you are helpless in the face of evil. And if the left, which I think it is evil, can get rid of that, that is one more little step they take to gaining complete control over us. Destroy the community. The community starts with the family, and then the village, and the town, and the city, and then finally the nation state. That again needs to be destroyed. So we see these huge buildings going up with impersonal, faceless bureaucrats running these enormous schools and hospitals and housing uh, uh, situations. No more local people. They don't want local people there. They want it removed from the local people and given to the bureaucrats, and the bureaucrats, of course, are the state. And the state that they want, of course, is a socialist stroke communist state. Destroy the middle class. When communism ended in uh, 1989 in Czechoslovakia, Václav Havel, the, the uh, dissident playwright who turned into their president, said that, that before they could rebuild the damage that communism had done, they first had to rebuild the middle class, because the middle class are the backbone of any society. They pay their taxes, they educate their children at home, they do all these terrible things that the state does not want you to do. They want to be in control of your children. They want to be in control of every little fact of your life. So destroying the middle class, and they've done it with 
what they call the classless society. The classless society has nothing to do with the classless society. It is class war aimed at bringing down what they envisage are the bourgeoisie, the middle class. They are not the bourgeoisie. They don't have the bourgeoisie income. But class warfare, directed from the Labour Party as well, was designed to eradicate the middle classes, and it's worked incredibly well. You know, look at uh, even the royal family have got strange sort of estuary accents. Everyone's totally embarrassed about being middle class these days. And you look at the people on the BBC. Think how the BBC used to speak, and think how they speak now. This is all to do with dragging down the middle class, dragging everything down to a lowest common denominator. And why stop at just destroying the middle class? Destroy the working class as well. You open the doors to the entire world, who are, compared to us, extremely poor. What's going to happen? They are going to drive down the wages of every single working man and woman in this country. And the, these people don't have a proper voice. They can't be heard. But they are being absolutely brutalized by Conservative, Labour, Liberal, all of the policies that are in action at the moment are designed effectively to smear and traduce the working class because the working class failed them miserably 60, 70 years ago when they didn't rise up for their revolution, for the communist revolution. We were too rich, the working class were too rich by that time. They were standing in a queue in Ibiza for a beer. They were not standing behind barbed wire queuing for toilet paper in Moscow. So we were, no, we were no longer of any use to them, which I'll come back to later. So there's an awful lot of destruction going on right now. Destroy the nation state. Peter Sutherland is the United Nations Chief Migration Officer. And he has actually, he has no fear of saying this. He's come out and he said, we will utilize mass immigration and multiculturalism to destroy the nation states of Europe because unless we destroy them, we cannot politically control them. And this is exactly what they're doing. They've divided, they wanted to divide England up into 12 regions. Why did they want to do that? Break away Scotland, break away Wales, divide us all up. It's historically very simple. It's called divide and rule. They are totalitarian, oligarch people who want to effectively take away the, the sovereignty and the nation statehood of every European country for one reason only, which is political control, and they are all of the left who are the people that are doing it. Segregate the generations. You know, if you go to Africa, old people are wise and old people are listened to. In this country, if you're over a certain age, you're out of the equation, mate. You have reactionary ideas and viewpoints that have no place in modern, progressive, multicultural Britain. You have to be silenced. But they don't silence them by doing anything drastic. They simply remove any ability that they could have to make an impression or to educate younger people, which is why at the, at the BBC, Tom, thank you for coming here tonight, which is, which is why at the BBC nearly everybody is under the age of 35 or 40. There are no old people at the BBC anymore because they have been swept out. They're no longer wanted. They might start telling people all sorts of terrible opinions that might be listened to by the people in the country, so they have to go. So segregate the generations. Promote conformity, pretending it's in the guise of uh, individualism. Have you ever seen a more conformist group of young people in the world than young English British people today? You talk to them about any subject, multiculturalism, gay marriage, feminism, women's rights, equality, diversity, they will all give you the same opinion. Yet they've all been told through their entire school career that you have to be you, you have to be an individual. They are the most conformist group of individuals I've ever seen in my life. And it's very important, obviously, to do this to them because you need to have group think, herd mentality. And while you're at them, young people, make them vaguely anarchic. Remove discipline from schools. Get rid of all the old traditions and the taboos. Turn them into 
little me, me, me generations that have no concept of duty or patriotism or morality or honor or sacrifice. Everything comes down to me, 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 pleasure now. Destroy competitiveness. We used to have, this is sort of going back to education again, but we used to have a fantastic educational system. And then they said it was elitist. It was elitist to try to drag people up to this level. We must actually just drag everybody down to the same level. We must promote egalitarianism, not elitism. But if you do that, you end up with the lowest common denominator and you end up with a pretty dumbed down young population that we have today. And meanwhile, you've got countries like China who believe absolutely in elitism, which is why they're on the up and we're not. Destroy self-reliance. A self-reliant people are not dependent on the state. Socialism, communism requires as many people as possible to be dependent on the state. You know, an astonishing statistic came up recently that the majority of families in this country now take more from the state than they pay in. And of course they do this for a very simple reason. Nobody will bite the hand that economically feeds them. You want to have control, you want to have power over the people, make them dependent upon you, take away their self-reliance, make them be on bended knee in front of you for the little fripperies that they grant you for everyday life, just to survive. Destroy democracy. Now, I'm not going to bang on about the European Union, but the European Union is not a democratic entity. I did not vote for Mr Juncker, I can't vote him out, I never voted him in. Any laws that they pass today, if I don't like them, there is nothing I or you, we, can do about it. Postal votes introduced by a left-wing government in the full knowledge that they would be open to abuse. And of course they're open to abuse. There was a, a reporter for The Independent, which has to make you laugh a bit, considering what happened to him, who went down to Tower Hamlets in 2010 to find out why there were 150 people, all Muslim, registered to vote in this one house. And when he knocked on the door, one man answered, and uh, he, he said, can I come in and talk to these 150 people? And so this intrepid young independent journalist uh, didn't just have the door shut in his face, they, uh, they came out and gave him a good kicking, which cheered me up no end, I've got to admit. <laughs> But, but the postal votes are an absolute disgrace. They are taking away our democracy. Baroness Varsi. Oh. <laughs> Baroness Varsi, exactly. But even she, this is how bad it is. She came out in 2010 and said that the Conservatives did not win a majority because of Muslim voting fraud in various areas around the country. And then she went very quiet about it because this was obviously another one of those taboos we cannot talk about. The media reported it for a day and then there was some operation to shut the whole thing down. We never heard about it again. But everybody in this room knows that Muslim voting fraud is endemic in this country and it is eroding our democracy, even if you take away the fact that we are no longer a sovereign democratic nation because of the European Union. But either way, we are losing our democracy. Now, another most important thing that they have done in order to traduce our civilization, our culture, our, 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 our race, is to bring in mass immigration. And I go back to this thing before about the, uh, the idea that the, the native working class were never going to allow the revolution to happen. You know, when Andrew Neither said that we are opening the doors to the world in order to rub the noses of the right in diversity, it wasn't the right whose nose it had it rubbed in, it was every single man and woman native to this country. And they are doing it because they want to utilize these people as pawns in their revolution. They need to have social disharmony, social uh, problems that they can then deal with. They can open up new organizations and new anti-racism things and all of this sort of stuff. It's all being done deliberately and it's being done to erode the national racial culture of this country. And then, 
Having done that, you don't want all of these foreigners coming in who are happy. They are of no use to the left if they're happy. So they introduced multiculturalism, which of course is apartheid, it's division, it's separateness. And they encourage them all to feel that they cannot get very good jobs, they can't do this, they can't do that, they don't get very good education because the evil, colonial, oppressive white man is holding them back. So get this idea into them that they are somehow being oppressed, which of course, you know, the whole thing about communism works on being oppressed. And one thing, to go back to sort of education again, was when Ray Hunniford was hounded out of his school in, was it three decades ago now? And all he wanted to do was, was, was to make sure that the Pakistani children at the school learnt their lessons in English, not Urdu. This apparently is a terribly racist thing to do. We cannot have them assimilating because the left doesn't want them to assimilate. They are of no use to the left when they're happy assimilated. They might even end up getting well-paid jobs and voting conservative. So this is something they don't want to happen. So when Ray Hunniford was hounded out of the school, one of the guys that was principally uh, behind the, uh, the, the, the sort of gang uh, mob mentality that got him out, and his name I can't remember, but he was a black Marxist who wrote a book called Black Power in Britain. And he actually said, did you? Chris, no, it was Chris Muller. Chris Muller, Chris Muller was his name. And he actually wrote in one of his books about, about black power in Britain that Blacks will leave school angry, embittered, dispossessed, and they will take to the streets with riot, riots with boots and petrol bombs. This is what this guy wanted. Now, Chris Mullard is now Sir Chris Mullard. He was rewarded. He was given an OBE for this. Ray Hunniford is a destroyed man. Ray Hunniford wanted them to assimilate. Mullard wanted potential revolutionary pawns. Mullard won. Hunniford lost. We lost. Destroy native resistance. We all know about that. If you talk about these things, you are smeared as a racist, Islamophobe, xenophobe. The idea that, you know, I'm no fan of Nick Griffin, but in 2006, when Nick, Gr when Nick Griffin said that there were uh, Muslim gangs meeting in our northern cities, raping white girls, he was prosecuted for it. He was prosecuted for this. And these people, the policemen, the social services, the local councils, they knew it was going on, but they were equally as happy to howl down Nick Griffin as everybody else on the left was. And then they brought in, you know, they tried to get him on the first place for inciting racial hatred, for daring to suggest that, uh, that uh, some Muslims are gang raping white girls. They wanted to prosecute him for this, but they couldn't get him because, as he's quite rightly said, Islam is not a race. So in 2006, they brought in inciting religious hatred to make sure that nobody could possibly notice what was going on in our northern cities, which is an absolute disgrace. <laughs> Disgusting, as I'm sure you will agree. Use selective history to counter native resistance. Now, anybody that's been or, or knows of children who've been through schools in this country over the last 20, 30 years know, knows that in the history lessons they, they make this huge commitment to teaching them about Nazism because they know that when they leave school and they have been thoroughly immersed that they know that Nazism is evil it's been done and drilled into them over and over again so when they are then accused of being a Nazi because for example they might say an awful lot of Muslim gang rapists in Rotherham don't you know they get accused of being a Nazi so they don't know if, if that's what I am then I'm not going to talk about what's going on in Rotherham because I don't want to be a Nazi because I know that that is a very bad thing. And that is the only reason that schools fixated, fixated on the whole Nazi thing without ever mentioning the crimes of Stalin or the crimes of, of Ho Chi Minh or the crimes of Pol Pot or the crimes of communism generally. Never. That was never, ever mentioned. Now, the final thing on top of all of this is to distract the population. X Factor, East Enders, soap operas, all of these things are designed to A, 
make sure that everybody gets their mind right about what they should be thinking in terms of migration, immigration, multiculturalism, feminism, homosexuality, gay marriage. That's always there in the subliminal subplot to make sure they, they know that. But it's also to distract them. It's bread and circuses, like it, uh, like it was in Roman times. Make sure that people never have enough free time to actually think about things that are going on in this country. So this, you know, all of us here tonight are thinkers. We have seen what's going on. We know what's going on. We are trying to do something about it. But an awful lot of people out there are quite happy. They work hard. They go home. They sit down, they turn on the TV, and that's it. They go to sleep, and then they repeat the process every day for the rest of their lives. Distracting the population when they are doing all of these things I've just outlined to you is the final nail in their revolutionary drive. It is not in our coffin yet, because we are still here, and we are still fighting back. And I hope that we are growing, and I also feel that with every year or five years, certainly, certainly in, in terms of decades now, nobody in ten years' time will be thinking the way they're thinking today from, from the, the useful idiot liberal left. And I'm just going to close by saying that uh, the, the, uh, the hard left who have been doing this have, have deliberately done it. They know exactly what they're doing. The liberals who are following them are not evil people. They're not very well informed people, they're not very bright people, but they are not evil. The hard left in this country, the communist left, is evil. The liberals are facilitating what's going on, and it is down to us, because we can never destroy the hard left. The hard left are in total control. All we can do is try to persuade the liberals that what they see today as right and wrong is upside down. The whole inversion of morality, the inversion of common sense, the inversion of decency, the inversion of right and wrong. We need every day just to get little bits and pieces out there to make people change their opinion because we are not far right. We are not extremist. We are not racist. We are not Islamophobic. We are none of these things. We are good, decent, humane people who see a serious problem driven by an evil clutch of people who, as Paul said quite rightly earlier on, in the last century killed a hundred million people to get their political ideology cemented. And I believe that they would do it again, given half the chance. We have to defeat them, but we cannot defeat them unless we persuade the useful idiot liberals. I'm not suggesting that in 10 years' time or 20 years' time we will not be able to defeat them because by then things may have moved on and it may be considerably more physical than it is today. But in that hopeful period between what is coming down the line and where we are today, our job today is to persuade with intelligence, decency, humanity, and expose the evils of the left and expose the evils of the liberal left, even if they don't understand that they're evil themselves. But if you put all of this stuff together I've been speaking about, we do not have a future. Our future is only going to be provided for for our children and our grandchildren if everybody in this room and the people outside this room who, who, who believe the way that we do continues what they're doing, continues fighting, and <clears throat> continues. We've all got to continue, and that's pretty much my piece there. Thank you.